Hi, I'm Chef Eric Mead and I'm the head executive chef at Mount Carmel East Hospital and today we are going to be making black bean tacos. So the first thing we want to do is we'll go ahead and start preheating our uh, large skillet here. Um, I have it on like a medium heat. We just want to get that nice and hot so when we're ready to uh, do our cooking down of our black beans. But first we want to make a simple um, six ingredient taco spice. So we're going to start, I'll grab a bowl right here. We'll start with some chili powder. We have about uh, four tablespoons. About two tablespoons of cumin. A little more than a tablespoon of uh, paprika, Spanish paprika. A tablespoon of oregano. And a tablespoon each of onion powder and garlic powder. Okay, and if you notice, we haven't added any salt to this. Um, we're not going to add any salt. We're going to keep this low sodium. But uh, if you're making this at home, you feel free to, you know, add a little bit of salt, just, you know, enough to taste. So we'll set that to the side. I am going to mix that up just a little bit. So this actually smells wonderful. And it's much better than any taco seasoning packets you're going to get from the grocery store. And chances are you have all of this stuff in your pantry already. Okay, so we'll set that to the side. Now what we're going to do, we're going to start preparing our ingredients, our raw ingredients for our pan. Um, we are going to start with, uh, we have one can, about 15 ounces of uh, rinsed and dried black beans. Um, we're going to do about eight ounces of uh, diced mushrooms. So you can use whatever mushrooms you'd like. Um, today we're gonna to be working with portobellas because that's what we had on hand. So I have about four of those and I'll show you how to clean and cut those. We're gonna do about uh, one onion. Um, this is a pretty large onion, so I think I'm just gonna use half today. Um, and then we're going to use a whole sweet red pepper. So first thing we will start with our portobello mushrooms. So portobello mushrooms, I love them. They're great. They hold up uh, well to um, cooking. Um, they don't fall apart. They don't uh, really get mushy. Um, they take on a lot of uh, great flavor. So the first thing you want to do when you're cutting down your portobello mushroom is you want to clean the gills out. Now you don't have to do this. They don't, you know, um, they don't particularly ruin any dish, but Sometimes the gills can come off and, you know, it looks like little flakes um, into whatever you're cooking. So all you have to do is just take a spoon and you're just going to just, just gently scrape that off. If you don't get all of it, that's fine. But we just want to remove a good, good amount of it. Easy enough. So we'll take that. Then we're going to... I'm gonna dice this up. Okay. So we have our mushrooms. Let's take our mushrooms. Just going to cut strips. And just gonna make a small dice. Okay. We'll put the mushrooms in last actually. So, put those and then I'll just go ahead and finish up the rest of these mushrooms. And I actually don't think we need all four. I think we're just gonna do three today. It looks like plenty. All 
All right, we'll set that other one to the side. Give our cutting board a quick wipe. And we will cut our bell pepper. Okay, so when you're cutting your bell pepper, take off your top and your bottom, stand it up flat, cut down the side, and you can open that up. Remove your seeds, we'll lay that flat, and then we'll run our knife just gently, not too deep. You just wanna cut off that white rib. Okay. Take that. Now we can flip this back over and we are going to cut strips so that we can cut another small dice. So cut strips all the way down. Now we'll put these together, turn them sideways, and we will do a small dice. Then we'll add these to our mushrooms. Okay, got a few scragglers here. We'll pull those to the side and finish these up. Okay, add these to your mushrooms. All right, we'll get our top and our bottom of our pepper because we don't want to waste anything. Do the same thing. Strip it out. Turn and dice. This recipe will work great with a variety of different vegetables as well. Um, you can use sweet potatoes. Um, you can use any kind of potato, actually. Um, you don't have to use black beans. You can use kidney beans, um, you know, great northern beans. Any kind of bean will really hold up to this recipe. So we'll add that. Then the next thing, since our pan is already hot, we're gonna go ahead and add about a little over, about a tablespoon of oil to the pan. While that's getting nice and hot, we're gonna go ahead and cut our, uh, dice up about half of this onion. And we'll start cooking that down first. Okay. Peel it back a few layers to expose the onion. All right. And when you're doing a dice of an onion, always want to leave the root end on. We're going to slice down and you don't want to cut all the way through. You want to cut about 80% of the way through, cut strips. You don't want to cut too, uh, through the root end. You want this to stay together. So we will cut through. Just take your time. Okay. Now I want to make one slice through like this. Keep your hand flat so that you don't catch your fingers. Okay. Take that back a little ways. Now we can just cut right through and we have perfectly diced onions. Okay. Now we'll just take this root in, get rid of that, and we can finish up so we don't waste any onion. Perfect. Okay. So now what we want to do, we have our pan smoking from the oil. We want to go ahead and add this to our pan and we want to saute this down.
Okay. We want to saute these for a few minutes till it gets translucent, till your onions turn translucent. And then we'll add our peppers and our mushrooms. Okay, so it's been about three or four minutes and our onions are, they've gained some color. They are translucent. So what we want to do now is we're going to go ahead and add our bell peppers and our mushrooms. Okay. Want to go ahead and get that mixed in. Okay, get that well incorporated. And while that's cooking down, it will, um, our bell peppers and our mushrooms will release water. So uh, that is uh, natural. So we want that to kind of evaporate as well. But while that's cooking down, we're gonna go ahead and now's a good time to add our beans. our beans in. Let this all come together. And then we'll take about Take about 75% about, or about five tablespoons worth of our taco seasoning. We'll add that to our mix. Mix that in. And I have some water here. We need about a quarter cup of water. Then we'll just let this simmer all together. And that will be our filling. So I'll go ahead and add the water. And while it's cooking, if it starts drying out, just add more water. It will not hurt it at all. Because we definitely don't want this to dry out. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and turn our heat down to like a medium low. Just let this simmer come together. All right, so this will give us a few minutes to get our toppings together. So uh, we're just gonna go pretty traditional today. Um, we have a corn tortilla we're also going to be putting on, we have tomato, we have shredded lettuce and cheddar cheese. So the only thing we need to do, let's just uh, dice up some tomato. So when I dice tomatoes, I just take a little bit off the top, just enough to get that stem end off. Then we'll cut this into slices. Okay, we will cut our slices into strips. Then just like our other vegetables, we'll turn it to the side and we'll dice it up. Simple. Take the rest of the tomato, dice it up, turn to the side. And we're done. Next, a little cilantro. I like a little cilantro on my tacos. So where the leaves start growing, that's where we want to cut. Take our cilantro, roll it so it stays together. 
And we'll just do a little quick chiffonade chop. Chiffonade just means you're rolling something and then you're chopping, or you're just making slices from that roll. Okay, we're just gonna do a rough chop on this cilantro. I'll just go through with, our, with my knife a few more times. All right, so we have our lettuce, tomatoes, cilantro, cheddar cheese. Um, you know, you make this however you'd like uh, when you're at home, you know, add salsa, add avocado, you can add sour cream, um, anything to, you know, this is your taco, so you make it however you like. And you know what, today I actually have a fresh jalapeno. I think I'm gonna cut some jalapeno slices. So I'll just take that. I just cut these super thin. Okay. That'll give us a little bit of heat. So now, I wanna check our black bean taco mixture and it is coming along nicely. Okay, so after about two more minutes, I think we'll be ready to remove from heat and then we can start assembling our tacos. Okay, so after about five to seven minutes, our black bean taco filling is done. As you can see, it has absorbed most of the water, but it is still nice and moist, hasn't dried out, and it's absorbed all those flavors and you'll just, you'll know by the smell, you can smell that cumin and that chili powder, um, you know, just, you know, just coming out of it. Um, so we'll go ahead and set that to the side while it's still nice and hot. I went ahead and placed a new fresh pan over here on our heat. And we are just going to, since we're ready to um, build our tacos, we're going to go ahead and toast off our corn tortillas. Now you don't have to toast corn tortillas, but they do come out better. They have a better flavor. Um, if you do put a little heat on them, uh, you can do this in a microwave in your uh, oven. Um, you know, if you're really feeling bold, you can hold them over open flame. Um, but we're just going to do these in a hot pan. And you, we, all we want to do is just put a little, put a little color on them. Uh, they'll firm up a little bit and they'll stay together and hold up to the uh, filling. So you just take that, got your hot pan. You can see we're smoking a little bit. Uh, make sure your pan is dry. Uh, we don't want any oil in here. So you just go ahead, throw your shell in. Just, you know, let it sit for a sec. So these probably about 10, 12 seconds on each side. And those are, those are nice. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and flip these over. And it's giving me those nice toasted, um, toasted marks. We'll do the other side. And I think we are good to go. So we have our nice toasted corn tortillas. Um, if you don't like corn tortillas, you can also use flour tortillas. Uh, you can use whole wheat tortillas, um, anything you wanna use. This will be good on a flat bread, on a pita, um, but like I said, today we're gonna to go traditional. We're gonna go with uh, corn tortillas. So we'll go ahead and do two more. And while those are cooking, I think we can start building. So I'm just gonna set these on our plate. We'll go ahead and spoon a little bit of our filling inside our taco. Okay. Flip these. All right, a little bit of lettuce. A little bit of cheese. Let's 
take these off the heat. Okay. Do a little tomato. And again, you personalize these tacos any way you like. You don't like tomato, don't use tomato. Okay. Put a few little jalapenos on there. And we will finish it off a little sprinkle of cilantro just to make it look nice and pretty. All right. And there we have it. We have our black bean tacos. Enjoy. Hi, my name is Amy Shea and I'm nutrition faculty with Mount Carmel College of Nursing. Today we're going to talk about the black bean tacos that you just saw prepared by Chef Eric. So first of all, this is just a wonderful meal, super delicious, so many great healthy aspects in regards to this particular meal. It has lots of great fiber, uh, over 50% of the fiber that you need for the day. So really great source of fiber. And it's an excellent source of calcium, potassium, iron, magnesium, and folates. Lots of really important nutrients for our overall health. We also have good protein and heart healthy fats. So overall, the nutritional aspects of this meal are really healthy. Now what I wanted to do is talk a little bit about the taco seasoning that you make in this recipe. So the, the recipe for the taco seasoning that you have makes a large quantity of taco seasoning. So more than what you actually need for the tacos themselves. So you wanna keep that in an, a container with an, an airtight lid and save that for future recipes. But as you can see on the slide, we have a comparison here of the HLC or Healthy Living Center taco seasoning versus just your traditional kind of store-bought taco seasoning packets that you can buy. So the first thing you can see quickly on this slide is that the ingredient list is much longer for the store-bought packet. So our HLC taco seasoning really only has a few ingredients, chili powder, cumin, garlic powder, onion powder, oregano, and paprika. And one thing to note is that chili powder is a, a mixture of various spices and, and herbs, and oftentimes chili powder does have a little bit of salt in it. So a quarter teaspoon of chili powder has about 20 milligrams of sodium. So when you do the math for this recipe, it's gonna give you about 320 milligrams of sodium in four tablespoons of this taco seasoning mix. So that's spread out throughout the entire recipe. But there are a few brands of chili powder that actually don't have salt in them. And so I've put some pictures on the slide for you guys to review that highlight some different brands that would be salt free. So Penzi's spices, we have a Penzi's right here in Columbus. You can check out Penzi's. Their chili powder is salt free. Um, also the Whole Fruit Foods brand, uh, 365 is their, their brand. That has a salt free chili powder. And then there's another brand called Simply Organic. Those are just a few of the ones that I found. But the main thing would be to just look at the label on your chili powder. So if you're getting a typical maybe um, store brand, you know, Walmart brand or Kroger brand or whatever, look at the label on that chili powder and see if salt is one of the ingredients. And then you could choose a different one. Regardless, this homemade taco seasoning is so much less sodium or salt than what you would get in a pre-made packet. Um, another thing I wanted to just briefly mention is you can note that we're using garlic powder and onion powder, not garlic salt and onion salt. So again, that cuts back on the sodium as well. But if we look over at the right side of the slide at the store-bought taco seasoning, you can see the ingredient list is much longer. So there's a lot more ingredients that are sort of not, you know, common ingredients that you would find in a kitchen, right? So this is obviously a more processed food and we wanna to try to move away from those processed foods. Um, and if the whole packet, if we do our math again, the, the whole packet is one ounce, which is about four tablespoons, and the entire packet provides 1,800 milligrams of sodium. So you can see the difference there. So four tablespoons of the store packet is 1,800 milligrams, whereas four tablespoons of our homemade is 320 milligrams. So a really striking difference when it comes to the sodium content. And also in the long run, you're going to save money when you make your own. So each of the spices and seasonings in our homemade taco seasoning are about a dollar for a bottle of that. But when you make it, it's such a large quantity. It's so much more 
than what the packet will offer. And a packet's about a dollar as well, but again, in the long run, you're going to save a lot of money if you make your own. Um, and then one other thing that I wanted to note um, about making your own is that you can really control the flavor profile. So if you love paprika or smoked paprika, you can add that. If you really don't like it spicy, you can cut back on the chili powder. You know, if you love cumin, you can boost that up. So there's a lot of variability with what you can do when you make your own versus just buying the standard store-bought packet. So the next thing I wanted to talk about with this recipe has to do with the tortillas. Um, and so on this slide, you can see the difference between a flour tortilla and a corn tortilla. And honestly, personally, I never really thought a lot about this. And then as I was kind of thinking more about these recipes and, and the flavor profiles, I started to look more into this. And you can see just two examples here. So these are pretty small tortillas. They're about um, four and a half inch diameter tortillas. So not, not real big, but the serving size for both of these is two tortillas. And so you can see for the flour tortillas, the serving size of two tortillas gives us 430 milligrams of sodium. And I know I harp on sodium a lot, but I think that's something we can all pay more attention to. Um, and then with the corn tortillas, you can see for two tortillas, it's only 15 milligrams of sodium. So again, a huge difference in the amount of sodium in our food. And then I know the print is pretty small, but at the bottom of the slide, you can see the ingredients in the flour tortilla versus the corn tortilla. Um, and so again, there's a lot of words that are sort of unfamiliar. You know, what is this sort of food science concoction? But the main thing is with the white flour tortillas, it's just a refined flour. So it's just white flour. Whereas the corn tortillas are actually a whole grain. So we talk a lot about a lot about the benefits of eating whole grains. And so this is a way to easily incorporate whole grains into your meals by choosing the corn tortillas. So hopefully you've learned a couple things that you can take with you when you try these delicious black bean tacos.